Hey everybody, it's John Cummings, founder of BarefootAndRich.com, author of Killing Time Vampires, and the creator of the Lawyer's Escape Action Plan, 12 Steps to Escaping from the Full-Time Practice of Law and Becoming a Highly Paid Expert. Today's video is for anybody who has struggled with how to get his or her leads and prospects to opt into a sequence of videos in order to lead them through a funnel that ultimately results in a sale. In other words, how do you put all of that together? Well, in the first video in this series, I covered the 10 steps you need to follow in order to get whatever your message is out of your head and onto the web as a video on your website. In this second video, we dove a little bit deeper and covered how you actually create that video and get it on your web page. The video you're watching now is the third in this series, and this is the, okay, now what do I do video? If you don't have any videos on the web yet because you don't know how, please go back to steps one and two, and you'll find a link below this video if you need a way to get back there. Well, let's assume that you have a video or video sitting in web pages already and you're ready to bring your leads and prospects to them and entice them with your mad skills and expertise. Well, there's essentially seven pages that you'll need to have to pull the whole process together as an experience for your leads and prospects to follow. And you've probably heard these steps enough times now to know them by heart and maybe teach them yourself. They are your opt-in page, video page one, video page two, video page three, your sales page, your thank you page, and of course, your content page where your training lives. So what steps should you follow to get all of these pieces to work together? Well, I'm gonna cover the steps that I followed to get these pages up in my exact configuration with Office Autopilot, WordPress, and YouTube, and then give you some alternative configuration suggestions if you're using Aweber with WordPress, lead pages, YouTube, and one shopping cart or other solutions. Infusionsoft actually charges $2,000 to set up their account so you can imagine that I'm not gonna be covering the uh, Infusionsoft setup in this video. Well, here's exactly what I did to create the sequence that you're, you've watched in this video series that I called the mini series for experts. And I'll even tell you two rookie mistakes that I made so you can avoid them. And the steps were as follows. Number one, create a video that entices people to opt in. Two, upload that video to the web. Three, create the opt-in form that people fill out after they see your video. Four, Create the page that holds the video and the opt-in form, which is known as your squeeze page. Five, create the page where your first value video will live and create the video that sits on that page, which would be video one of your free value video series. And then step six, you would repeat step five for the other two videos in your series and your sales page. Seven, create the messages that people will receive to prompt them to get the second and third videos and your sales video. Step eight will be to create the sequencing of those messages so that people receive them at the right times. In step nine, create and send out your first email to your list, introducing them to this video value series. And then step 10, unless you already have a sales page linked to your shopping cart, get to work on that step during the 10 to 14 day period that people are watching your series. So first, I created a video for the introduction of my series, which was my, hey, check this out video. I've covered how I made the video in my other videos, but basically this was a two minute presentation that said, hey everybody, I decided to make this really cool training series for my fellow experts talking about X, Y, and Z. And if you want to see it, enter your name and email address. In the step two, what I did is I uploaded that video to my Office Autopilot account. And this is the one video that I didn't want to host on YouTube, but instead on Office Autopilot, because I wanted to embed it right into my squeeze page in Office Autopilot. For my third step, I used Office Autopilot's forms creator to create the opt-in form to collect the name and email address. And this was pretty simple. You click on Admin, choose Manage Smart Forms, pick the fields that you want, such as name and address, and then set your settings. And then tell your form where you want people to be sent after they opt in, as well as the page they'll be sent to once they confirm the opt-in if you're requiring a double opt-in, which is usually recommended. I set both of these pages to be the address of video one's page to make sure that everybody gets there safely. And I'll show you how to create the same form in Aweber in just a minute. For my fourth step, now that I had an opt-in form and the video telling people to opt-in, I needed a place to put them. And that would be my squeeze page, which would hold the video in the opt-in form. You can do this in WordPress if you want, but I find it extremely difficult to make a clean page in WordPress without all the distractions of my navigation, my sidebar, etc. So I used Office Autopilot for this. And basically from right inside my Office Autopilot account, I chose the Pages button. It seems weird at first, 
until you realize that this is really a powerful tool. You just add objects from the right side of the page and it puts them on the left side of the page in your work area. So I added a rectangle to show a background, then added a video that I had uploaded in step two, then added the form I created in step three and moved it all around and then added my header logo and a headline above the video. And keep in mind, this is not a web page on my own website, and it's why I added my logo and stuff. But this actually made it really simple because you can actually host the page on Office Autopilot, as I've done here. And then you create a page address, which is your page name dot .com, and voila, you now have a page to send people to. And this is the page that you'll email to your list when you invite them to check out the new free video series that you have. Okay, so as the fifth step, what happens when somebody lands on your form, loves the invite video on the squeeze page, enters their email address? Well, two things. First, they're redirected to some web page on your site, which you've specified in an earlier step, and that's holding your first video in the series. And second, they're now subscribed to your mailing list. And that step actually happens a little bit differently in Office Autopilot than if you're using a Weber or One shopping cart, so I'll describe those a little bit in a later step. Let's stick to web pages for now. Step five would be to create a web page on your site within WordPress that would hold your first video. And you might want to do this step before step three because in that step, when you made your opt-in form, you were supposed to tell the form where to send people when they opted in. So I actually did create a blank page in WordPress before I got here to step five, just to have a web page URL to use in my opt-in form in step three. But as part of finishing step five, I'm now going to embed my first video and make this page look really nifty. So this is where people are gonna land after they opt in and see my first video. And then the sixth thing I did is I repeated those steps for each of the videos in my series. I made a page for them. And I recommend you step, follow step five for all three of them and get a page up for each embedding each video in them, and then you'll have four pages already laid out as I've shown in this diagram. Opt-in page, value page one, value page two, and value page three. And to tell you the truth, most of us don't actually do it all in advance. I created all three of my pages, but I did the videos as the sequence was moving along because I wanted to take comments from all of you from video to video to include in videos two and three. For my seventh step, I had to create the messages that were gonna be sent out throughout my series, and then for step eight, tell Office Autopilot the sequence of how often and how many days apart to send them. And this is where some confusion can come in from people about how to get people from video one to video two, then video three, and the sales page. In Office Autopilot, what you use is something called Autopilot, in which you create a sequence. And it's kind of a goofy function until you do it once or twice, and then it's very easy. You click on Create a New Sequence, and then you add an email to that sequence, which you can create within the sequence interface or in the messages interface, and then make it a part of your sequence once you're finished with it. Either way, the theory is pretty straightforward. Uh, what you're doing essentially is you're telling Autopilot what message you want to send people who opt into your opt-in form, and then when to send it. And since you want them to see your video two, three, and sales pages, presumably several days apart, you'll need to add all of those steps to the sequence. So when I created mine, I didn't actually create all of the emails that tell opt-in leads about video two and three and the sales page. I just created one email that told leads about video two. And in that email, I said, hey, I hope you liked video number one. Here's video number two. And I linked to another page on my website where I was planning to embed video two, uh, which I had actually not shot yet at that point. So I told Autopilot to send this video to anybody who subscribed to my getting past the tech list and then sent this email to them three days after the opt-in. And how do you do that? Well, back to my opt-in form. In order to, to subscribe people to the sequence I just referenced when they opt-in, you need to go back to your opt-in form and add that sequence in Office Autopilot. And that's kind of easy. You just go back to the opt-in form that you already created in the earlier step, choose the Settings button, and look for a field that says Sequences. Find the sequence that you just created and add it to the form. All right, so now you've got a public facing squeeze page from step four that contains your video from step one and your opt-in form from step three. And when somebody opts in, they land on the page on your website that you created in step five, which holds the video that you created as your first value video in the series. 
And now you also have a sequence created that will cause people to be emailed three days after they see, vi see video one and tell them to go to see video two. And then you can add steps to do the same thing to send them to video three and to your sales page. Now, what if you don't have Office Autopilot, but you're using something like Aweber along with WordPress? Well, it's really not a problem. In Aweber, you can make opt-in forms just like you make in Office Autopilot. Specify the fields you want, the style you want, where you want the person to end up after they opt in, and then put that Aweber form on your web page by using the publish function. If you're doing it this way and not in Office Autopilot, you'll want to just create the landing page either on one of your own web pages or you can use a site like leadpages.net which allows you to create squeeze pages pretty similar to what I just described from Office Autopilot. And I believe you can either host it on Lead Pages or integrate that page with your own WordPress website. So let's not get past ourselves. One easy way to do this on WordPress after creating your opt-in form is to simply create a page in WordPress embed your video on the page, and then put your opt-in form right below the video. And I recommend that you disable the sidebar on this page so that it's just the video and the opt-in form on that page and that there's not too many distractions. The other main difference with Aweber is that Aweber has a problem with people subscribing again if they're already on your list. So if you want to email your existing list and say, hey, come check out my cool opt-in page and subscribe to this new video series I have, you can't have people subscribe to the same list. So you kind of have to create a new list in Aweber that is different than your main mailing list and use that list for your squeeze page opt-in form. When people opt into that new list, they'll get the emails that you specify uh, for the new series that you're trying to tell them about. In Aweber, that sequencing is called follow-up emails and you essentially create a set of emails that will tell people what you want to tell them and then link each video page like you would have done in Office Autopilot. And then you'll specify how many days after the previous video you want the next email to go out. So very similar logic, just a different interface. In Aweber, you also have the option of unsubscribing people from list A when they join list B to solve that other problem. So if you want your main list members to no longer get solicitations from you when somebody has already opted into list B for your series, you can do that with the unsubscribe function. All right, here's my two rookie mistakes that I made in Office Autopilot. I actually linked to the wrong video page in my first email when I was supposed to send people to video two. I linked to video one. So a lot of people, including maybe you, got sent to video one instead of video two. So make sure you double check your links. The second rookie mistake I made was that I used a setting called unsubscribe contact from sequence after last event. I checked this not even really know, knowing why and as a result anybody in my sequence got unsubscribed as soon as they saw my second video. So that was a bad move. Don't use that function unless you know what you're doing. I had to send out my link to the second and third videos manually to everybody instead of letting Office Autopilot handle it for me as it was intended. So you, as you can see there's a lot more to cover such as the sales page and the handoff to the shopping cart and those are basically steps 9 and 10 and somewhat beyond the scope of this already long video series. But Based on the feedback I've gotten from the first two videos and the amount of material needed to cover all of this, or at least refresh it for a lot of us fellow, our fellow experts, I'm going to hold a four or five call uh, format where I can provide answers to all the detailed questions that people have about each solution. And I'm going to use an online conference call software for this. Everybody can submit their questions in advance of the call, and I'll probably charge a couple of bucks to cover the time I'll spend putting all this information together. Uh, but you know it's going to be a very reasonable cost for my fellow experts and I'll deliver until it hurts to make sure everybody has the best chance of getting all of this done without letting technology get in the way, which was the reason for the series in the first place. So what topic is most troublesome for you right now? Leave me a comment, a suggestion, or a question below and I'll come up with four or five main topics to cover on a call sequence that we can all start next week to get everybody moving at highway speed. I can't wait to hear from all of you and look forward to seeing you again.